And here we are again for another edition of Trey's Chowdown Live. And I'm here today with Marcus. Marcus. As everybody knows, we do hot topics first. So uh, we're going to start off with our hot topics today. Uh, this is a national news. James Beard, uh, if you've never gone to the James Beard website, you ought to go to the James Beard website. It's a fantastic website. It's jamesbeard.org. And this week they were highlighting a, a dish they were going to highlight. It's called it's a Honey Glazed Seven Spiced Cured Peking Duck with Candid Kumquats, Plum Sauce, and Chili Scallion Pancakes. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Somebody took a while to come up with that one. I uh, I love James Beard. It's where yeah. I check every time before I go out of town of where I'm going to eat when I go to that individual yeah. city. So yeah. do you know where that was from? Uh, it was in New York. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll add that to the list of the next <laughs> place I'm going. It's, a, it's just a great website. It I mean, is. I really, because they have all the neat stuff on there. Well, and it's also compared to the other awards, it's a credible website, right? Yeah, it's right. not just a, a pay to play where you're going to get on there because you're popular or whatever. You, ha you have to actually earn those. You know what? Funny you said that. Um, that brings up a topic I can talk about right now. Okay. Uh, some I've had two different people ask me hey, how much it costs to be on your show. And you can't pay to be on my show. You're on the show because <laughs> you're good at what you do, and you got a great product, and you and I like what you do. I mean, it, it's not. That's just crazy to me. But apparently, that's a big thing nowadays. People paying to be on a show. I think uh, it's paying to do everything, especially when we get into specifically the alcohol world. It's uh, paying to. Uh, get these medals, right, at the Spirit Conference. It's, are uh, you sponsoring the conference? Uh, are you participating to the point where you're going to get a gold medal? Are you just entering and you're going to get uh, a bronze medal? But I don't think the public really understands that. They see the medal, it's a marketing gimmick. Yeah, yep. we'll talk about that too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, also too, we have James Beard uh, Awards coming up. And here again, I'm going to refer back to the site. Uh, if you haven't been to the James Beard site, jamesbeard.org, and they have all the awards for the restaurants and the chefs who've won, which are credible awards. You cannot pay to be on those awards, and you cannot bribe or anything else. Those are real, actual, done awards, so check it out. Um, Ruth Chris is, is hosting and wants to host parties at their place, and I'm sure you all know about Ruth Chris. I love Ruth Chris. I do, too. They have one of the best chickens in the world. Have you had their chicken? No. <laughs> I love telling that story because nobody eats it. That's Everybody right. Everybody goes there for steak. Absolutely. It's a stuffed chicken breast with no bones, and the cheese is inside. So when you cut it, the cheese pours out, pours out the center of the breast. Wow. And they have a special technique they do. Yeah, it's neat. It's neat. I think their steaks are great. I think they uh, baste their steaks in butter almost better than anyone. I know and, they uh, do. It's, it's just a, it's a great bite of meat. Yeah, it yeah. is. That's that's Ruth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and it's called. I get I get. Oh, they harass me all the time. Ruth Chris, it's Ruth's, Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. Yes, yes. <laughs> they harass me all the time. Um, and uh, Chipotle is is rocking the national uh, food scene again. They're using sustainable sourcing for their food, and their carne asada was so popular they ran out, and they they they've got it again, and so they're redoing re upping it until the first of January. <laughs> I don't go to Chipotle very much, but apparently a lot of people are. And it's a big deal. So uh, that's a very popular restaurant. I'm it, a uh, Texas Freebirds person. Yeah. Oh so, yeah. Yeah, I go there. <laughs> well, you know who owns Chipotle. Uh, McDonald's, Yeah, right? McDonald's. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Never thought. <laughs> yeah. They probably own a lot of stuff we don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> and in local news, uh, Stir is open again. Uh, I told you all this last week, but I was at their, uh, Sunday I was at their grand opening party, and it was fantastic. It's on West 7th on the rooftop. You been there yet? I haven't. I, I want to go. What uh, what type of food would you describe it as? Uh, it's a big mixture. Uh -huh. It's a huge mixture of food. It's fantastic. I tried five different dishes. They were all very, very good. They got a great. I'm in the middle of doing. I do a, a hamburger contest every year. Yeah. Uh, and I do it for 12 months, so I, I encompass about 130, 140 restaurants. Yeah. And I had the, I had one of the things I had was a hamburger, and it was absolutely delicious. It was um, it was a, a very juicy, tender beef coated with thick cheese, and it ran down the sides. It was put in a broiler. Where it, it was fantastic. Uh, it's on. So, it's next on my list to try. Yeah, you'll yeah, like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, you'll like it. Uh, Thanksgiving dinner is being served at Buffalo West, as is a lot of restaurants, but Buffalo West in Fort Worth has a huge Thanksgiving Day spread. Um, huge, They have one of the best salad bars for us. Have you been there? I have. I love that place. Mm -hmm. It's the old steak and ale. Yes. And funny thing about the guy who rented that place and who's part of that restaurant, he was a, he was an executive for steak and ale. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, see, nobody yeah. knows that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, it's, it, but it has that very, if you want to go for a romantic, cozy feel restaurant, well, I like open restaurants, but if you're going to, if you want that feel, that restaurant is awesome for that. Well, I'm glad. I, I mean, I liked the keg. I, <laughs> that yeah. was an institution for me growing up, so I'm yeah. glad they've kept some elements of that. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, was, yeah. it was great. 
Uh, Concrete Cowboy opened up a couple weeks ago. Have you been over there? I have. I think they're about to carry our stuff. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I loved them. And uh, Wild Acre Brewery's expanding. You know that. I do, and I, I think this is a good time for us to say that um, Wild Acre is taking our uh, empty bourbon barrels, and uh, they're uh, aging a beer in that, and we're going to release that in uh, 2020. That's awesome. Yeah. See, I didn't even know this. <laughs> Isn't this great? This is how things, this is good news. See, mm -hmm. I had a shocked face this morning. That's right. <laughs> I'm pretty excited about it. That's and, awesome. Uh, I th and, you know, hopefully it's a really good beer. But I know those guys, and I know what the beer they're putting out and the quality, and I'm, I'm pretty excited. So well, for those of you who don't know, Wild Acre is a local brewery, um, and it's, it, it's, it, it's a beautiful place. Yes. Gorgeous place. Uh, they built it from the ground up. It was the old ranch style bean area, right? That's right. The old ranch style bean plant, and they uh, they built it up. They, they have one of the only air conditioned, full air conditioned tasting rooms, right? It it's big, and yeah, it is, it does have uh, AC. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh -huh. yeah. And so uh, that was the first time I went there. When I pulled up, I was like, "Oh Lord, this thing's enclosed, and it's going to be it was hot." <laughs> said, but when it was air conditioned, so I was like, "It was fantastic." And they got Joe Risky out there. The oh, is that right? Yeah, Joe yeah. Risky's out there. They have some great events out there, yeah. and it's built that way. Um, I don't think a, as many people know what a great event spot it is. Yeah, it's you big. Know? Yeah. yeah. And so they got the new place they're opening up, which is on, on far west Camp Bowie West. And they're going to have food. Uh, David Halster, I guess, is going to be the chef there, and they're having food, which is going to be awesome, too. Right. And when I talked to John, he said that, you know, they were really trying to focus on um, the neighborhood and having sort of a neighborhood uh, tap room there to service um, uh, people around there that wanted to get a beer and have some food. And I think it's a really good idea. I think it's a great idea. I mm -hmm. think here's the deal nowadays. You have to be engaged with the community. Right. If you don't engage the community around you, no one's going to come see you. And if you engage them, they're going to tell their friends, and they tell their friends. And the, the, the social media and word of mouth is the best way to do nowadays. Anyway. Right. They get some more personal feel. People feel like they're in, involved in what's going on with your business. Well, and there are they're an authentic Fort Worth brewery too, yep. right? They're doing it the right way, and the, they've been everyone who's there. And John's from Fort Worth, right. and so um, I, I think people are going to buy in just like they have bought in on the beer, and it's going to do well. Yeah, I think, you, I think you're right. And last but not least, the thing we're involved in every year, Sunday, November 24th at Raw Beer, we have the Veterans Chili and Barbecue Cook-Off Championships. I judge that thing every year with some other people, and it's absolutely fantastic. It's a great event, and if you want to support the veterans, you need to come out. It's Sunday, November 24th over at Raw Beer. I've never been. You need to go. It's pretty cool. It's a big event. It's a big event. Who won last year? Do you I remember? Know. I, I judge so many things this year. I judge so many things. There's no idea to know who won every year. Okay. <laughs> and besides that, I try not to pay attention, so I don't have to worry about it. You know. That's right. You know. Yeah. Uh, plus, they the only way you do that, you know, is if you hang around. And lots of times, I'll Saturdays and Sundays are big days for me, and so I will literally I can make as many as ten places or fifteen places in a day. I'll start at eight or nine in the morning just. Wake my way around the sure. list, you know, all over the Metroplex. And so <laughs> yeah. if, I, if I, if I'm a judge for some places, I'll judge and I shoot out and then I go. So it just depends on what's going on. So we're going to get into you now. So Marcus, <laughs> say your last name, please. Kiprios. Kiprios. That's right. The first name is spelt different, unusual the first time I saw it. I thought it was wrong. So I went back and looked at <laughs> do some research because I can't spell for anything. Yeah, it's not John Smith. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> so what, the, the last name, what, 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 what nationality is your it's, last name? I'm Greek. Yeah, Greek. Okay. Yeah, that's right. So, and so, has your family been here a long time in in Fort Worth? It's my uh, my grandparents immigrated, and um, uh, but both my parents met at the University of Texas in Austin, and then they moved here for work. And so, uh, they I've been here since uh, the seventies. Oh, that's fantastic! Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. that's great. So, Marcus is Marcus is with Blackland Distillery, and we're yep. gonna we're gonna talk about that a little later on. But right now, we're gonna get into everything else. So, you said you were here since nineteen seventy. Uh, yeah, I was born in nineteen seventy seven, actually in Dallas, and then I moved to Fort Worth when I was one. Well, a little young, a little young youngster. <laughs> <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure. Oh, that's funny, a little youngster. <laughs> okay, so seventy seven, and then uh, you you. Um, you grew up here uh, grew in up the in Metroplex. Yeah, went, went to high school in Fort Worth. You've seen some changes, haven't you? 
Oh, quite a bit, especially uh, in the area that we are now down 7th Street. But Oh, uh, oh gosh, don't even talk about that. Montgomery Plaza. Uh, but it's just amazing to me, the continued growth. It's just not stopping, right? Non-stop. Right. It's, it's, like, it's like they have their foot on the gas and nobody's taking it off. Right, uh, which I'm not necessarily complaining about right now when, yeah. when we're in the business of uh, alcohol and distribution and selling alcohol. Yeah. So. <laughs> Would you not, you know, I, to, I told my dad a long time ago, you know, when, when – uh, because I've seen I've seen Seventh Street change twice now. Right. And when it went down in the eighties and it came to just a ghost town, except when Fred's was there, you know, the Fred's been there right, forever. Right. But when it was a ghost town, I told my dad, Can you imagine we we would drive from there to downtown to the offices we had restaurant offices downtown and then back to West Fort Worth. There was nothing. I said, How many times you passed buildings that were for sale for nothing? And you wish you would have bought that dirt. Oh man. now and now you see the buildings that oh. are all over a million dollars. Oh, I mean, it's just, how is this possible? And someone has been and some have already been sold three or four or five times. Correct. Oh my gosh. Yes. Okay, so you went to high school where? I went to a private school called Trinity Valley. Oh, uh -huh. I went to Country Day. Oh, you did? But guess what? <laughs> they kicked me out. <laughs> uh, uh, so you're probably not a fan anymore. No, I'm a big fan. Oh, my okay. Whole, my whole family went there. <laughs> okay. I have, I, have, uh, I have five brothers and sisters that all went to Country Day. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, my kids go to Trinity Valley. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah. So My, my, my cousin Pooh Poo went there. She's a doctor now. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. Well, that's where the doctors go, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's funny. That's funny. Yeah. 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 She moved to. Uh, she got her degree and moved. Has big practice in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico now. Okay. Great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's funny. You said that. I got. <laughs> I got. You know, I had really red hair back then. Okay. And uh, well, I got red hair now, but it's, it, it was red. It was more red back then. That's more strawberry blonde. But you know, people <laughs> people make fun of you back then. There weren't a lot of redheads. There weren't, especially okay. ones named Trey. Trey was a very unusual name. Sure. That many years ago, sure. five decades ago. Yeah. And. They might have been picking on me a little bit here and there. And not that I couldn't take it. I just got, one day I had a little too much. And they were, I wound up, they were a hot tire on a roof or something. And I remember I got some hot tire and was ticking the kids a hot tire on the kids. And it just didn't go over real well. And that was the... That was it. And that was it? That was it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're probably better for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm better for it. Yeah, boy, when I got home, I wasn't good for it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so you went to Trinity Valley, then uh, you went, where'd you go to school, Lubbock? Uh, no, I went to the University of Texas. University of Texas, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, by, both my parents had gone there, so that was sort of a... a that's given. where I was going. <laughs> now, the interesting thing about you, it's funny you're in this business now, but you, you went to school, you studied law. Correct. Uh, yeah, and then I went to uh, Pepperdine for law Pepperdine. school. Pepperdine? Yes. Oh, in, in L.A.? Uh, yeah, I lived in Malibu for three years. I lived in Laguna Beach for four years. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's much different out there. Oh. <laughs> but my girl, anytime someone says California, my girlfriend goes, don't tell them you live there. It's awesome. <laughs> all you talk about. It's just experience, you yes, know? Yes, yes, yes. I lived, I lived in Laguna Beach. I mm -hmm. lived in Laguna Niguel for a year. And then I lived in, in San Francisco and Marin County for two years. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I was back and forth. So it was, it was, it was a neat deal. I enjoyed my time there. It, is, it, is it not? I, I, I'm a Texan by heart and Me love too. Texas. I'm, Me too. I, it's, it's in my bones and my blood, but I enjoy. I also lived in Colorado for three years. We had a ranch in Colorado. I lived in Kansas for a little bit. Um, I, I enjoy the culture of different people, restaurants, food, socializing, wine, alcohol, all that beer. Um, so I enjoyed the experiences a lot. Me too. I love LA. I love going back to visit as well. Yeah, yeah. it's a different world, isn't it? It is. It, it, it's literally it's like a different country. It's totally different. Well, and and I could never live there again uh, for a number of reasons. The traffic oh. uh, being the number one reason. But um, again, like you say, the food is excellent. Uh, it's LA, whether whether we like to admit it or not, is just perfect. Ahead, it's ahead of the scale yeah. in terms of uh, pushing the boundaries and especially in diverse food uh, and new cultures and culture, coming yeah. in. And um, and that's really the best part of, of any like major city of Chicago or New York or places, and that's why they have all the Michelin star restaurants too. Right, right. You know they've changed that this year. I don't know if you saw, but James Beard has changed that because they want to get more of Texas in the mix now. Right. Which is, and I've heard and I've heard some chefs. I'm not going to say, but I've heard some chefs say, oh, it's just a political deal for them. Blah blah blah. I don't really know, but the fact that they've changed it. It, it, it's it's good for us. Well, I, I think, A, I, you want Texas chefs to receive the recognition because there are some really great chefs here, right? Fantastic chefs here. Yeah, and two, you can't tell me that all of the best chefs are in A, B, and C location no. in the country. We know that's no. not true, yeah. right? But it's getting the people out here and getting the judges out here to evaluate and then getting the press and the recognition that they deserve. Right, and you know what I've noticed, if, if interviewing chefs, being really super involved with chefs for the last five years, a lot of the great chefs that are here, 
did time in New York, of course, in L.A. in in Miami. They did all, they did their time, and they're here, and they brought that back. And of their, course, their culinary experiences created what they are today. And it's pretty easy to pick them out of the lineup. It in sure Fort is. Worth of, <laughs> oh yeah, he spent some time in New York, or he spent some time, yeah. as you said, and. Those are the restaurants I also tend to gravitate towards. <laughs> Clay Pitch is one of them. Absolutely. He spent time all over Colorado, Hawaii. He is a phenomenal chef. One of my favorites. And a, and a, a genuinely nice person as nice, well. Nice, right? nice, nice. Because sometimes uh, those two don't necessarily mesh. No. Uh, but uh, Marcus is amazing. Uh, listen, I've told this story uh, th two or three times in this show in the last year, but I'm going to say it again because it's just so damn funny. Yeah. So... Um, I was in there one night in Clay Pigeon, mm -hmm. and I used to go to Clay Pigeon a lot, but now, I, I, now I've got so many restaurants because I do the whole, I do from Paris all the way to Abilene now, basically okay. restaurants, you know, from barbecue, fast food, all the way to five stars. So at that time, I was concentrating just on Fort Worth, and I was just getting started, but I, I went in there one night, and uh, I'd, had some, I'd had some TX whiskey, had a few of those, <laughs> and I was sitting there talking, and... Uh, Marcus came out and said, "Hey, we've got some. We got some winter white truffles. You want? You want? Oh, I want yeah. you to." I said, "Okay." He brought me a whole truffle out. Well, I was talking to people, and I wasn't really paying attention to what he was saying. I'm ADD anyway, and he right. said, he said, "Put your sniffer on this." <laughs> I thought he said, "Try this." I didn't look at it. It was dark. I had a few drinks of whiskey. I've been into a white truffle, <laughs> two hundred about two hundred fifty dollar bite. <laughs> and you ought to read Marcus's story on it. I mean, it is hilarious. I mean, it tasted like. Right. It's too much. Oh, it's too much. Yeah, yeah. It's too much. <laughs> but it was a funny story. He ran back. I could see him in that kitchen walking back and forth. They were all, Marcus was looking at him. He had to, his <laughs> eyes lit up. He came back and he says, you know what you just did? I was like, yeah, I know what I did now. <laughs> uh, you know, great stories, man. Well, he, he probably handled it a lot better than some other chefs would have. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah he, he's a good guy. Though. Yeah. He's a good guy. So anyway, I love Clay Pigeon. Is your stuff in Clay Pigeon? Uh, I think so. Uh, oh, Benny Keith is doing that for you, no, right? Or no? Well, yeah, they do. And it's funny. I, I have a pretty good relationship with Marcus. And uh, and right now I go all over to all the bars and restaurants. Yeah. And a lot of people go to Clay Pigeon and then come to our place or come to our place and go to Clay Pigeon. But uh, we're we're close enough that I haven't even gone over to even yeah. ask him. Well, yet. you don't think about it. It's, it's like, I mean, what is it, five blocks from you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, so let me get back. Some ADD kicked in again. So let's get back on track. So you went to law. You went to Pepperdine. Yep. You came back and you were a lawyer in Fort Worth. Yes. Okay. Yeah, was a lawyer at a civil litigation firm in downtown Fort Worth. Uh, trial law for fifteen years. I was just fixing to ask you. So you did trial law. Uh -huh. That p p people don't understand the difference between an attorney and a trial and a one that spends a lot of time in the court. But people see TV and they think, oh, they just. That's not the way it is. That the ones in their courtroom are totally different facet than the ones that are this uh, litigating. You're absolutely right. There's a there's a there's a huge difference between uh, paper law and transaction law, and then being in the yeah. courtroom. And but either both of them require a lot of practice, right, to get good right. at, at either one of them. So, um, and I think trial lawyers are kind of dying these days because less and less cases are going um, to trial now. But people don't want to go to trial. Let me ask you a question. Don't you think? With all the social media, all the TV shows, don't you think that you have to be somewhat of a good uh, presenter and presentation person, and good and good? Uh, uh, I, I would say on screen, but to be to be a good trial lawyer in the courtroom to make people look at you, pay attention. Absolutely. I yeah. mean, you're just trying to convince twelve people that your side is right, yeah. right? And so that's all about your ability to present this story and convey um, your arguments to them and. I feel the 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 worst for prosecutors now when you allude to television because yeah. it's the CSI effect where yeah. they want to see the crime on video. All the want, all the DNA. They want it all. Everything. Right? Like and before that just that wasn't the case. Yeah. So I think it's becoming more and more difficult in that respect as well. As, as, and I, was, I, was, I was I was I was I hesitated a while ago. I want to say don't you think you have to be a good actor? It wasn't it wasn't it wasn't an actor, but I want to say on screen because basically you're standing up in front on stage in front of twelve people. Basically, what you're doing. Yeah, no, I think it's a big part of it. Yeah. Uh, I think I think you almost have to be a character, right? Yeah. And you have to connect somehow yeah. with that. And if you don't connect with those jurors, um, because that's really where you win and lose is uh, at jury selection, in my opinion. Um, then you're done because if they hate the attorney, 
it's over. You know what you're doing? It's just like you, it looks like what you're doing now with this. You're selling yourself. That's right. I, and I tell people, say, I'm not a good salesman. I'm going to say, what do you do in your daily life? You sell yourself every day. You just don't realize you do it. That's right. You know, if you're a bartender, you're selling a drink for, for, for a better tip. You're giving them service for a better tip. I mean, there's always a way to sell yourself all day long, every day. <clears throat> yeah. And it's funny because when I first started this, uh, I always said, I'm not a good salesman. Like, uh, <laughs> and there are people when I go to like the liquor tastings that are professionals and right. that are really good. Um, and I could practice and get better at it, sure. But the best way to sell my product, I've learned over time now, is just uh, to be authentic and tell my story and, and, and just say why I'm doing this and what we're making, right? And then that really sells itself. Well, no, what sells is, is your passion. Right. For what you've done, because here's what you did. And I, 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 I don't know if I've told, we haven't had a whole lot of time to talk, but you don't sit, no one sits in my chair and talk, it's on my show unless they have passion for what they do, whether it be a distiller, you know, a, 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 a what your Sonoma? Oh, sommelier. Som sommelier. <laughs> I can have a hard time saying the that's word, right. but you're not a master sommelier. No, you're a sommelier. No. Yes, that's but, right. <laughs> you know, or you're a chef, or you know, whatever you do. Uh, so, it's important that people realize, and, and your passion shines through with what you do, and, and, and how you, and how you, and obviously what, how successful you become. But what's amazing is, is you went, you had a whole, you you went to school and spent all this time and money to be in one career. That's right. And you switched up to go to a different career, which is, just, I mean, talk about getting the far end of the spectrum. You went from one scale to the other scale. Yeah, that's right. Um, because even though I was practicing as a lawyer, I went to culinary school, and then I pursued a wine education, and then I went to a number of spirit schools. But for me, really, it's a culmination of the law and food and wine and spirits that brought me here because um, I'm still thankful that I went to law school and it helps you with all this too every day every day every day just the bureaucracy right. and the red tape i mean the laws on the books right now date back to prohibition they're right. antiquated i still don't understand that right but, yeah and and they just haven't been revised so um it's i i don't blame the government because they're acting under the same umbrella that yep. they've always had and so um the permitting and the licensing uh, that takes a lot of time, <clears throat> excuse me, but I've been able to cut through that pretty quickly. And if you think about it, we opened March 20th of this year. Right. We signed our distribution agreement and we hit liquor store shelves September 20th of this year. So that was six months. So that was pretty fast. Very fast. In the, in the world of let's open, get out there and then penetrate the market. And, and, and you weren't one of these big breweries or big that already had all these people in place to work for you, a team of people to do all this for you. True. That's the big thing. So you, I forgot, I forgot when I read your job, I forgot you went to culinary school too. Yeah. So you went to culinary school while you're being an attorney. At night. At night. Yes. Here in Fort Worth, obviously. Culinary school in Fort Worth. Okay. So you're being an attorney. You were going to culinary school. You just like school because I hated school. Uh, you know, <laughs> culinary school, I didn't really view as school. Yeah. It was the best thing I've ever done. And I tell everyone that um, everyone should do it at some point in their life, it, whether you're going to do something with it or not. If you think about, you know, we have three, four meals a day. Um, you get a different perspective uh, in the grocery store and what you want to do. It's just a tool that I loved having. But it was also a start for me to say and open some doors because I'd always had a, food, a passion for food and wine to, to really do something with it. So what so uh, what was the most profound moment in your life to where you made the switch from culinary from from attorney to going to culinary school to saying I want to be I want to have my own distilling company experience <clears throat> company. Um, well, when I when I was practicing, I thought there was a big decision for me to go to culinary school at night. That was the first decision, right. just because I loved food. I was I was a foodie, right? right? But to actually go in and do it and learn it, that was uh, just sort of a creative outlet for me. But then when I started to um, get into wine and to go to some of these spirit schools, I, I looked at it and I said, all this is is cooking, right? This right. is, I think most people don't approach it from a culinary aspect. They approach it from... A lot of people that I've met are home brewers or home distillers, and they want to make some stuff and open a distillery. I looked at it as this is this is cooking, and there, and that's all you're doing to get from the beginning to the end. And is there a culinary element here that we can make this do this a little bit differently and do it better? 
And so when I said, yeah, I think it, there is, um, I started putting a business plan together and started to really become serious about okay, it. Okay, you said something that struck me a while ago, which I think is totally accurate. You said it's just like cooking. Mm -hmm. So basically what you're doing is you're cooking. Right. You're cooking ingredients to get what you want out of the, out of the, put in these bottles. That's exactly right. You start with grain, right? right? And we use North Texas grain. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> Hope I didn't choke you up. No, 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 not <laughs> hey, at all. Hey, wait, the last show, uh, uh, what, what show was that? <laughs> it was A.Q. Pittman. Oh, A.Q., yeah. Chef A.Q. Pittman, I doubt. She just, she just won meat flight, by the way, this last week. Do you see that? I didn't get to see oh, it, but it's it, awesome. that's phenomenal. Uh, she was choking, literally choking. They had to run and get her water. Oh. I'm like, her eyes were like, <laughs> I felt so bad for her. I couldn't no. help her. I was sitting in my chair. And I think someone said, don't get up. So my mic said, don't get up. We'll get it. We'll get it. So I was like, <laughs> no. I was like, yeah. Anyway, so. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. So anyway, anyway so go ahead. So go ahead where you were. Um, and now I've sort of lost my train of thought there. <laughs> That's uh, what I did. <laughs> we were talking about the spirits and cooking. Oh, yeah. So yeah. we take the grain and then um, we were putting it in a large pot of water and we're trying to extract the starch, right? And then we cool it down and we pitch yeast, much like making bread, right. to where we begin the fermentation process. And then we distill it to separate the alcohol. And then how we finish it, depending on what we're making, again, is a to me, is a very um, uh, a culinary type decision process because uh, if we're gonna add botanicals for gin, Right. right. What botanicals are we going to use, um, and how are we going to get a balanced drink? Uh, for vodka, it's how are we going to filter and clean it up and make and take the impurities out um, to to produce a very clean spirit. Um, and for the whiskey, it's we just need just enough flavor um, as we put it in the barrels. And what kind of char are we going to use on the barrels? And again, to me, these are all um, dis culinary decisions that you're making because it's the 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 final output is what is it going to taste like at the end of the day what is the flavor the end of flavor the, the flavor profile flavors, right? are you looking for, just like a dish you're looking for a flavor profile absolutely and you're looking for it to be balanced and you're looking for it uh, you're looking for a hundred things right. right and but right. to me again these are all culinary decisions these are not decisions that uh, that the home brewer or the home distiller is making and so um, I think all of those decisions from start to finish has helped us at the distillery when we look at it from that chef perspective. Okay, so let's tell everybody, it's Blackland Distillery, and uh, uh, this you're gonna see the tops of the bottles here, but it's Blackland Distillery, and uh, we've got, uh, he's, he does vodka, he does gin, he does rye whiskey, and a bourbon whiskey. That's right. Now, um, the Blackland Distillery is, what's the street are you on over there? Weisenberger. Weisenberger, there we go. <laughs> you kind of see a little bit there. The bottles, look at the bottle right there. It's phenomenal. Um, but the streets on Weisenberg, which is right behind... The Target in Montgomery right, Plaza. Right, Target in Montgomery Plaza. And I, I love, not only are you close to me, <laughs> but I love because one thing I love about your distillery is your tasting room, is I drove by there probably 10 times, okay? Didn't know what it was. It kept building. I'm always looking for new stuff because some stuff you can't find on the internet until it's ready. Sure. I, was, I, I kept, what the hell is going on over there? And I, then I just deduced it to, oh, it's another... Um, you know, painting place or, sure. or, or, or they had, they had a, a chrome plating place or something sure. over there. So I was, ah, and then I realized it was a distillery. And, but what you see when you walk in versus what's on the other side of the, on the outside of the street is phenomenal. Your tasting room is gorgeous. Thank you. And, uh, I still think it's difficult to find. And, uh, but what we tell people is when they come in, cause it takes a good, 15 to 30 seconds to adjust once you've walked in and kind of take it all in. It and, does. And well, first of all, it's dark. Back. You're going from light to dark. Correct. You've made it. You've made it very cozy. Yes. Very chic, very cozy, but very classy. Thank you. And it remind. And you've got plenty of the horseshoe shaped bar. You've got lots of seating there. Yeah. But you've got what you've done is you've taken a, a, a space that's not real big, and you've sectioned it off. Just I don't I don't know if we did that automatically, or, but the way it turned out, you've got the private booths over there. Yeah. You've got the beautiful horseshoe bar, and you've got the sitting on the other side. And you can sit at all those places and talk. And other people won't hear you on the other side. So it's a neat deal. It's a neat concept. I appreciate it. And what we tell people when they come in and they say, "Oh, we had a hard time finding this place," is, well. You found it now. This is your reward. Here's the gym. Here's the secret. Right? <laughs> Come in, have a drink, and enjoy yourself. And they do. Yeah. And um, it's not that I don't want to promote 
the tasting room, right? Because it is small, and I like the intimacy and the nature of it being a, a place where you, a quiet place where you can have a drink. Um, but more and more people are starting to figure it out and roll roll in, right? And which is great for business. You only have so much space. But I only have so much space, and I don't want to kill um, the atmosphere and and what it is in there. So you know, I don't, I don't know if you ever watched it when I'm there, but I've been there four or five times, and I always talk to everybody at that bar, everybody in there. I always to ask them, hey, you know, where are you from? And it's amazing. They're all from a lot of them are from around there. Just some of them just a free streets away, or sure. it, it's neat. But what you and what I was going to say was it, your place reminds me of an old. Gangster type movie film in Las Vegas, Chicago, or New York, where you walk in and everybody's kind of it's, it's kind of a dark, but it's cozy and people are all talking to each other, having a good time. That's kind of what you place your mind. It's, it's and it's neat to because a lot of places nowadays are all open, real lighted, garage doors thrown up in the air and stuff, and so you don't get that same effect as you get from your place. Yeah, and we wanted to create that atmosphere so that people could a come in and really enjoy the cocktail because we're featuring our spirits, right? right. And then b we wanted a place where people could actually talk and have a conversation, which is why we have rules that a lot of people don't like. But one of those is um, no cell phones. That's right. And uh, wait, wait, let, let, wait let, let, hang on, <laughs> hang on, hang on. Wait, I gotta remember this. I gotta remember this because I remember the first time I went there. I said, "What the hell?" I was gonna, what, what's the bartender? Uh, the, he's not a bartender anymore. But what was, Mike. Mike, okay. Um, I call him a barkeep because he's more than a bartender yes. at that time. Yes. But I liked him from the get-go. But he, he, I had my cowboy hat on everything. I walked in there. I was the only ones in there. It was, uh, y'all just opened up, whatever. Sure. And I walked in, and he looked at me. He looked at her, and he said, I need you to read these. <laughs> like, I, like I was going to bust out or something in the place. So, so uh, like I was going to start toilet pistols or something, you know. But uh, I read them. I was like, I looked at my girlfriend. I, I like, and he walked in. I was like, what? And, uh, but, but I looked around. I said, this place is really cool. So, I want to. I want to do, it. and it, it works. It's and everybody about, and no, but no one. I, I haven't seen anybody complain. No, it sets the tone for what we're trying to create inside. And then, um, what I really enjoy seeing is, without even saying anything, and someone's cell phone rings, they get up and walk outside. Yeah. Right. And then again, that just adds to. Okay. Um, here we go. This makes me mad. This is, this pisses me off. Okay. As a person who is on his phone, my phone's got to be charged three to four times a day. I'm on social media six to eight hours a day, sure, every day, sure, all the time. Sure. Everybody, my girlfriend gets mad at me, but I don't have her ever have a ringer on or any kind of vibe where you can hear it any anywhere. Sure. I think it's wrong in today's society for somebody to go on a restaurant or a church or anything. You hear that so much go off. I mean, everybody in the room can hear it. Right. Why do you do that? Why not just have put your phone on silent, leave it on silent? I don't get that. I I don't either. Um. We really haven't had that problem, thankfully. And 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 when I say no cell phones, we actually allow you to take photos. Of yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I know that, you do, right? Yeah. yeah, but it's just not. You can't have the conversation. I, I know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah people, yeah. I'm sure. Listen, the people at clientele that go in your place understand. And the funny thing is, I've been there what like five times, and I haven't seen any craziness go on. No. There's a lot of craziness goes on in bars in Absolutely. Dallas, Fort Worth. Yes. <laughs> out there, so it's fantastic. Thanks. So you got your rules done, and <laughs> you got the rules done. I, I got that, and I really enjoyed. It. And I saw the drink menu. Now your 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 cocktail menu, you 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 do you do cocktails with all these drinks. Right. So we so, can only serve what we make. Right. right. As a as a distillery with our permit. So we have a very cocktail-forward menu. We have about 12 to 15 cocktails that change frequently based on uh, produce. And then uh, so we'll have three vodkas, three gins, three rye drinks, and three bourbon drinks. Awesome. Now you've got some. You, you brought a little menu. I Can did. you just go through some of the ones you have that you have for this? How often do you change it? Seasonal? Or is it weekly, uh, or what do you do? Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't say weekly, but let's say every three to four weeks we change it up. Okay. And again, it's just based on the fruit because um, we do all our bitters in-house, we do all our syrups in-house, and then we do all of our juices that we squeeze um, fresh uh, daily. Now, do you think that comes from your culinary background? I think that's part of it. I just think also my philosophy is that if you're going to come in and pay $12 for a drink, then it better be an a incredible damn good. drink. Yeah. That's right. And so how can I make sure that's an incredible drink? Well, we make the alcohol. We make uh, the syrups. Again, we make the bitters and we make the juices. And so I'm full transparency about in terms of what, what we do. I'll tell you exactly what we do. It's just going to be very hard for you to recreate that at home because um, of how we do it, right? Um, the syrups we make or um, the simple syrups, if it's a fruit base, takes us about 24 hours to make it. Um, and then obviously we're making the alcohol, the bitters we're making, it'd be very difficult at home. So um, we'll tell you what it is, but that's what's special about our place when you come in and have a cocktail. You know what that is, don't you? 
One word. Passion. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. passion for what you're doing over there. Absolutely, you have 24 hours to make your stuff. Now that's all. The, that's all the bottles I see lined up on the. If, so if I sit on the Horseshoe Bar, and I've sit on, I guess it'd be the South Side. Is that the bottles I see all lined up there? Right. So we use. Um, we we don't use our nice bottles no, for that we no. pour into right. it, right? Because these are custom bottles that um, look nice and they're much more expensive. Right. But. Um, I don't reuse bottles either, so it's it's better to use the 750 milliliter bar stock bottle. Sure, um, but yes, but then everything else that's there, the bitters um, and the syrups, are those are all right there. Awesome. Yeah, um, yeah, and so we offer quite a few drinks, but um, there's a couple that will never go off our menu. Our number one selling drink is the old fashioned. Uh, which we brought today, which you're not going to try here in a little bit. Yes. As a matter of fact, let me have that bottle right there. So that's like our bar bottle, right? That's a neat. Yeah. And uh, so... Oh, wow. (laughs) You know, I smell that. It was over here and I smell it. That that aroma. That's right. It's just like like a dish. The aroma is the first thing that people notice. That's right. Um, And that's a special drink because we use 100 proof rye whiskey in that. And then... Um, 100 proof rye whiskey. That's right. Our simple syrup is made from turbinado, which is raw sugar. And then it just blends better with the um, cocktail and the alcohol. And then we use um, our own uh, aromatic and orange bitters, which uh, we oh, make good. in-house. That's it's good. a very bitters forward old fashioned. It's a strong old fashioned, and I understand why it's our number one cocktail. I guess I could look at that clock right there, but I'm looking at time. Oh, it's 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 time. We can have a drink. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, hey, Ron. I hope that whole bottle's left by the time we get through. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a, so that's that, that's a drink that will never leave your menu. No, it's too good, and uh, and the demand is too high for it. Right? It's smooth. Thanks. It, demand is high because I, I don't want to change. I want to. I don't want to change your stuff. But right now, like if you watch Food Network Cooking Channel, or anything they've got, they have old fashioned donuts or flavors they're doing. They have old fashioned cookies. There's all kinds of old fashioned flavors. Old fashioned. Uh, the other day I saw on the Carnival Eats because uh, I TiVo all this stuff because I have to watch it when I'm at the office. They had a, a old fashioned. Uh, what's the the funnel cake. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Well, it's a good flavor and it makes sense. And yeah. I think the whiskeys also go with a lot of things, whether it's uh, chocolate or pecan or uh, any type of flavor like that. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the other, I like all our drinks and they wouldn't be on the, the menu if, uh, if they didn't make the cut. One thing we like to do at the bar is we let our servers try to participate and try and push them to try and um uh create something because i want them to stay motivated right and so um and I, that's a good idea thanks <laughs> no it's huge <laughs> uh so one of our servers right now sam has a uh, purple bee on the menu it's a gin lemon honey lavender drink that's done really well Oh, that sounds good yeah you know what that sounds like a sexy drink it is and if you put a little salt lavender, it sounds sexy. It is, and it's uh, it's really well balanced, and I I'm really ha- uh, proud of her for coming up with that. And then uh, I'll tell you what we we have this drink on the menu. It's called grapefruit punch, and grapefruit punch. And as while as men gravitate towards the old fashioned, right. the women gravitate towards the grapefruit punch. Really, and it is simply vodka. Grapefruit juice, lemon juice, and a grapefruit sherbet, which is a grapefruit simple syrup. And I watch it sometimes because they can drink it like water. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, not good. No. <laughs> but it's perfect for when we do events or go to concerts or it's outside and you just can't beat it. I have a really, really good friend of mine, Ronnie Dempsey. He, he's a manager. He manages Jaguar, Volvo, and Range Rover, mm-hmm. and Autobahn. You probably have many, but his favorite thing is bourbon. He does go to bourbon <laughs> bars. I want to. I need to meet him over there. I want him to try your stuff. Absolutely, yeah. love to have him. Yeah, you need that clientele anyway. So what? What, what else we got? <laughs> um, I'll tell you uh, one of the craziest drinks on our menu uh, that I don't personally like, but everyone else seems to. So we leave it on the menu. <laughs> is uh, is something called our Dream Sickle Fizz. And we, Dream sickle fizz. That's right. That sounds that sounds like a West Seventh fr- uh, fruity, fruity 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 drink. Well, I think it's a little sweet, but we use Dublin vanilla cream soda. Okay, and we've tried other cream sodas, but only the, the Dublin is the best. Hands. I guess the flavor profile. Correct. 
And then we uh, mix it with our bourbon, and then we add uh, round orange ice cubes that we've made from orange juice. And so... Wait, 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 wait. Oh, well, <laughs> back up. You can't just skip over that now. Damn well, it. Don't act like we all know what you're talking uh, about here. Uh, round orange ice cubes. Yes. We freeze uh, fresh orange juice, and uh, <laughs> as, the, as the ice melts, right, the citrus and the acid from the orange kind of mellows out the sweetness of the cream soda, which is pretty assertive. And you're left with uh, a very different, but a very good um, this, dream This This is what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. This is phenomenal. Okay, so you, you, where in the hell did you come up with the idea of freezing an orange cube and, ha and having it <sighs> So it just gives you just enough flavor as it melts. Correct. As it uh, as it disintegrates. That's right. Into the into the drink. That's it right. It gives you just enough flavors for, for what you were looking for. That's right. Now where'd you come up with that? Well, I have to give a lot of credit to uh, my bar manager Jeremy, um, who's really phenomenal with the cocktails. But um, he's really put an emphasis on dilution of. Uh, ice cubes and water, which is big in cocktails, Huge. right? Because some Huge. people want the big ice cubes, some people don't want any of the ice cubes. I'm a right? big pure whiskey drinker. I like the one. I like the one cube. Right. So the same principle is applicable to other drinks. When and we do a lot of fruit ice. Okay, where we take freshly squeezed, squeezed fruit juice, and then freeze it for the same purpose of okay, let's slowly release it to get some of that sweetness, or in this case, some of the acid out. Um, for the drink as you enjoy it. And I think that's just, to your point, another level of cocktail making as compared to let me go to a bar and let me get a vodka soda or what have you, right? And again, I think that's what hopefully is part of what justifies us. And I say $12. So $12 now these days has become... <laughs> no, it's not a lot. Here, 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 and, here, and you know what? And, and, and so my girlfriend is not only my girlfriend, my best friend and my lover, but she's also especially my manager because she, keep, she helps keep me on track because we have so many things we have to do on the weekends. You know, I have, I, I, we actually make a list of things, places we have to go visit and stuff. It, it's a business for me. It's what I do. Sure. So I'll get to talking, socializing, well around, throwing my hands in the air and drinking. She'll be like, hey, you know, we, we got to go. We got to get this place. We got to get this place. And, but what she does is she watches, she watches prices everywhere because sometimes I'm, I'm really in tune to talking to the owner, the bartender, the chef, the, any, anything that has to do with the restaurant or the bar distiller and i don't notice anything but like if we go to a place and the drink is like 12 bucks and it's real weak or it's not a good drink she'll say this place isn't gonna make it or that's bad and what she says is 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 that people don't mind paying for a 12 dollars if it's a good drink i agree you can't have a 12 dollars drink have a one, one ounce or a half ounce pour and fill full of water or fruit that's not gonna work i agree and so. it's, it's frustrating and then not to go back to your hot topics or anything i think the new trend and i've seen it a lot in dfw right now is I'm going to charge you for the drink, and then I'm going to charge you the mixed beverage tax because I've got to pay it, and I'm going to put it off onto you now. That's a huge deal where I've seen more and more restaurants and bars doing that now. Yeah, I saw that too. I saw a receipt. somebody put a receipt on. Uh, I'm on a lot of sites, and, sure. You know, as bar sites, something like that. And uh, I saw where somebody posted on a, a customer had posted on another a customer had been there had posted back on the site, and they'd circled. There was there was like. Literally, like th three different taxes, or yes, they were they were livid. They were like, man, I, it was they were livid. Yes, it's. I view it as it's the cost of doing business, and do you think the average person doesn't pay attention to that? Yes. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I pay attention to it, and I stop buying drinks at those places. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. In my business, it's what I do for a living, sure. and I don't. You know, and lots of times my tickets are adjusted, or they're not adjusted, or. Whatever, but I just, I, I just, I, I just don't pay attention to that and, until she said something, and I started look, seeing it a few, about six months ago. Started seeing it. Yeah, I think she's right. I think that um, the businesses are counting on the fact that people are just going to sign the ticket and move on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, back to your drinks. <laughs> um, uh, another really popular drink. Uh, I'll just say two more. One, the Hemingway gin and tonic, and people say, "Oh, it's a gin and tonic." Um, we do uh, a couple of different things. Uh, yes, it's our house gin, and yes, we use a really nice tonic water, but we also add bitters, and we add a half ounce of coconut water. Your bitters. Our bitters. 
And uh, the coconut water in our bitters makes all the difference in the world, right? Wait, is it your coconut oil or water? Uh, no, we use it. We use, a, we use okay. yeah, we bring in a coconut water. I thought you were <laughs> going to tell me you're back there making that too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if we had time on that one, I, I probably would have made that now. I'm probably going to go back now and say, can we make our own coconut water? My I can't believe you're like buying <laughs> coconut water, man. I'm going to tell everybody in town you're buying coconut water. <laughs> 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 yeah, that was a discussion we had. I think uh, I think the time that we were going to put into it was more than. There's some pretty good quality coconut water out there. Yeah, okay. And then finally, um, we have a really popular watermelon gimlet. Well, watermelon gimlet. That same. That's a really cool name. Yeah, and um, it's it's nice to highlight our gin, and um, we freeze. We also uh, here we go. <laughs> we crush the we crush the watermelon. We juice the watermelon, and we create a uh, two inch uh, watermelon ice cube. And then, again, it's just an extra bit, and we uh, um, it's just an extra kick of watermelon along with the fresh. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, you <laughs> freeze a two inch. Are you talking about? Like the, t two inch, like the circumference of the glass, or two inch deep. What, what are you talking about? Yeah, like a two inch ice cube, right? Like the standard big ice cube you would get, um, like you would see in a square right. on, in uh, your old fashioned, right. right? So we make that into watermelon ice with watermelon juice. Watermelon ice. That's right. And it dissolves into the drink. Correct. With the um, gin um, and then a little bit of lime juice, and then we garnish it with mint. Absolutely phenomenal. It's a great drink. Okay, so let's talk about the bottles. Because the first time I walked in, I saw your bottles. I took about 10 pictures of your bottles on the wall, <laughs> right? This, this is before I read the story about the bottles. But I want you to tell people about the bottles because the bottles really caught. The first time I walked in and I sat down, what, what I do, at, you know, my family owned restaurants for, you know, decades. So I always go into a restaurant or a bar or, or any kind of area. So I look around at the environment. I look and see what it is, you know, the, kind of the motif it is. You know, what are the servers doing? What, what what are the customers doing? But the first thing caught my eye, I was just, I didn't even hardly scan. I saw these bottles. They were absolutely beautiful. So tell everybody about your bottles. So uh, my bottles were designed by uh, a woman named uh, Una at uh, Timmins at uh, Dando Projects. And all she does is design alcohol bottles. That's her whole job. And in fairness, she did the labels as well. And so... Beautiful. They're very classy. Very classy. Um, it's a custom bottle. I, I would think you, you, most people don't pay attention to it, but most bottles on the shelf, if you go into a liquor store, are what are called stock bottles. Right. There, you just go and you buy it and you put a label on it and you can dress it up. But um, we wanted a custom bottle that stood out and that sort of um, was consistent with our brand and the spirit we were trying to create. And I just think she did an amazing job. And um, it's she this, did. It's the same bottle, but with different spray paint on the outside. You know what's funny? You say most people don't pay attention to bottles, and you're, it, but, but it's funny is that I've always done that. Sure. Uh, and for some reason, some some people some people you know you, you what do they say you can dress up a salware, but it, it, it but the bottles to me sell the that get your first glance. Absolutely. Now what's in the bottle has got to deliver. No question. Or you won't go back, but. You know, the, the bottle does help sell it, in my opinion. Oh, I agree. And it's been great for us, especially early on. And early on, it was, I love your bottles, I love your bottles. And then afterwards, it's, oh, I also love what's in your bottles, yeah. right? So, yeah. so, so far, it's all worked. But I agree that the packaging is important because it's what you see first and it what, it's what drives your eye and gets your attention. Yeah. Yeah. Packaging is kind of like humans, you know. You may look good on the outside, but what do you have on the inside, right? That's right. So, um, yeah, we've been... Really happy. I mean, it was a big hurdle to start to design and secure a custom bottle and and get the um, production of it and then get it shipped over here. Right. But I would okay. You say shipped? Where's it from? China. Okay. No. Be wait, okay. Well, hang on. Who? Do, where does the person design the bottle? Where she live? Uh, L. A. Okay. She, <laughs> that's okay. All the best designers are in LA or New York, so that's she, not a problem. She used to be a supermodel, which is a, a funny story. I did read that. Yes. And I, and I saw her on a TV commercial one night, and I thought I'd been trying too much from one of my barrels <laughs> in the back. And I called her and I said, Una, um, did I just see you on a, a TV commercial? And she said, yes, I used to be a model, and I do it once a year to keep my SAG card. 
Oh. Uh, but then I looked her up, and she was not just a model. She, <laughs> she was a, a supermodel. Oh, yeah. This is what she does now. Yeah. Well, but you know what, though? Being a supermodel, you travel all over the world. Oh, yes. So what she did, the passion she had being a supermodel, drove her to be able to do this because it gave her it gave her wider eyes to this to this well, industry. Well, if you go to her website on Danto Projects and you see the other bottles that she's done, her aesthetic is amazing, and she just has a, well, a great what design. What was the website? Eye. Dando Projects. Dando Projects. Yes, and they make um, glass bottles, um, mostly alcohol, but across the board, and I just think it's so worth um, when you're doing something like this to... Because it, it facilitates your dream of the, and passion for the product. That's yeah. Why. Well, and they were great about that and trying to understand what I was trying to do and um, uh, and try and help me through the the bottle and the label to get there. Sure, sure. Okay, now let's talk about something else that's, that I thought was just phenomenal because I know how that industry works. Let's talk about the partnership with Benny and Keith real quick because I'm, I'm, I'm dragging you down here and we've already got five minutes left. Oh, that's show. okay. This, it's been great. <laughs> okay, so because I'm excited for you, Benny and Keith. So as soon as I saw that, I was amazed because I know how hard the food is here, especially to get, in, to get into someone like that. That was a, a monumental uh, signing for us, right? Because um, uh, they took a chance on us and we somewhat took a chance on them. But, you know, they've been in the beer distribution business for the last 100 plus years. And so they had uh, Deep Ellum Vodka and they had Frankly Vodka, but we were their first uh, bourbon, rye, and gin. And um, I think they're simply trying to diversify and, and see the really growing spirits market right now right. that is huge. huge. Um, and I like that they were a Fort Worth company headquartered right. in Fort Worth that we're made in Fort Worth. Right. and um, Homegrown. Homegrown, quality company, and it's been you know, it's early, but it's been a fantastic partnership for us since I love Benny and Keith. And I love everything about them. They support the community. I love, I've always loved those guys over and there. And not only are they professional, they have the relationships with every liquor store that's out yeah. there. Um, and now... And I they work hard. And they work hard to Absolutely. build... Absolutely. And they're they, excited. They work hard to build relationships, not tear them down. They don't, they don't just want money. They want a relationship. And that's what builds business. Absolutely it is. Yeah. And, and, and in just the short time we started, I told you, September 20th, we hit liquor store shelves. And now we're in over 70 liquor stores in DFW. Um, and every day we're in more and more bars and restaurants. And it's a, a big part of that has been Vinny Keith. You can, you, you're carrying a Sharpie that people are going to start wanting your autograph for long. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's happened uh, twice. <laughs> that's okay. Are, are you signing bottles? Well, you really can't sign these bottles. Uh, I've signed a few. I guess you can put this on the label. top. I've signed on the label. Oh, have you? Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty good, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. It's going to be worth a lot. <laughs> In the so beginning. I'll, I want to talk about Myron Sage, too. Myron Sage, uh, which is right here. Uh, Ron, can you see it? Myron Sage is uh, awesome food. Uh, they, they, they I, I swear, I don't think I've seen a more colorful presentation. Everything they have is just so colorful and so beautiful. Well, Callie's a lot like me in that she cares about the details and she's very focused on the final product. And um, I had had them on the show. They're using high quality products. Yeah. She was actually an instructor at the culinary school before. Ah, uh, okay. So, but even if she wasn't, I uh, she the convenience of being right behind us is one thing. But but more than anything, it's the quality of the food that she puts out. And that can great. get any of this at, at, in, the ta in your tasting room. Yep, in our tasting room, we do light grazing, charcuterie, hummus, uh, warm olives, and then Myron Sage is right behind us. It's a great grab and go where you can get food and take it home and cook it. Good. Okay, so Blackland Distillery. What's the website? Uh, it's BlacklandFW.com. Blackland FW and FW means Fort Worth. That's right. Homegrown, <laughs> baby. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's great, though. And uh, uh, if they if they are a bar, they can get Benny Keith, right? They can get they can get they can get through Benny Keith. Um, bars and restaurants buy through Class B, which is Specs or Goody Goody. Okay. Yeah. So any bar or restaurant that's interested. Um, and, and having us can go can just buy that. They get their liquor through Specs or Goody Goody. But I'll just say, if you are if you are interested. And you'd like me to come to your restaurant or bar and do a tasting? I'd be happy to meet with anybody. There we go. Yeah. Happy to meet. With, and 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 what's your is is Marcus at Blackland? Marcus at Blackland uh, Distilling dot com. Marcus Blackland Distillery dot com. Yeah. And for us again, uh, y'all, thanks for thanks for everything. Thanks for er, y'all watching and all the support y'all giving us. Uh, I enjoyed having you here, Marcus. It's been great. I've yeah. really enjoyed it. And I want people to come see you. That's important because you're locally and homegrown. Thank you. 
And we want them to come. <laughs> I know you do. I want them to buy your product. Absolutely. It's and, a great uh, Christmas gift. <laughs> yeah. And Monday, we've got a big secret for y'all. On Monday, uh, we launch uh, we launch our uh, television series, our television show with with TCN, the, the TCN app, the new. They have a new fantastic app with all kinds of uh, shows on. It's going to be, you know, we're just, we're excited to death. Congratulations. You're going to be on there. Congratulations. That's, <laughs> Thank you. that's huge. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and as always, we'll be here next week. Uh, TraceChatan.com. If you're looking for our website, TraceChatan.com. That's Trey with an E, not an A. <laughs> and we released our best Bloody Mary and DFW article. Uh, did you see it? I did not. It's we spent. A, I spent a long time doing it. Who won? Uh, the Realm, that in Burleson. Keith Budden, really? Chef Hicks. Yeah, 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 I know that. He moved right? down here, yeah. Okay. you got to see it. It's got a fried chicken thing on it. Anyway, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see you all next week. See you next week. TraceChatOut.com. Adios. Trey Chapman, publisher of TraceChowdown.com. I'm passionate about finding the best food, drinks, and chefs to sharing it all with you. I should know I have over five decades of food experience. Find me on any podcast platform, Facebook Live, or just Google me. Now you can watch and listen to all my great finds every week on my live TV and radio podcast at Trey's Chowdown Live.